Are you having trouble scanning objects like this? Things that are shiny, dark, and have areas of high contrast? Well, today I want to help you get better scanning results. If you're watching this video, you know that sometimes you can't avoid scanning difficult surfaces. There are things that are shiny, thin, and have areas of high contrast. And the scanners that are normally very accurate under optimal conditions struggle to photograph the surface. So there are a couple things that we can do. We can improve our scanning path by scanning more of the object in one go. We can also improve our reference material using something like a textured turntable. And the last thing is to improve the surface of the object by adding something like a scanning spray. So let's make a few scans and compare the results. With a turntable like this, I would use some putty to position the key in a way that I can scan both sides and the top. This will allow me to capture three of the four sides of the key, which will result in a more accurate alignment between multiple scans. To start scanning, I bring the object into view first and then start recording. I'm going to hold the scanner at the same distance while rotating the turntable. My goal is to capture as much of the object as possible in the first round, so when I start focusing on specific, hard to reach areas, the scanner will have plenty of recorded data to reference. The geometry on the turntable will also help with frame alignment when processing these scans. Think of the scanner like a blind mouse. It cannot see very far and it doesn't have a wide angle of vision. So having a turntable like this acts like a floor. The scanner can always know where it is in space as long as it's in view. It is a much bigger object to lock onto rather than the key. And by making a good scan of the turntable, we are also making a good scan of the key on top of it. This also helps with tracking as the part goes in and out of view. So I've just completed the first two scans, which I will align and show you later. This is a traditional method that works well for most objects, but next I'm going to see if I can get better results with just one scan and the texture of this turntable. It's important to know that more frames do not make a better scan. It's about quality, not quantity of the frames. So this upright orientation also allows me to get a good angle and watch my distance with the scanner as I'm scanning these shiny parts of the key. We will take a look at the results in just a moment. So at this point, we've tried two different methods of scanning the ski, with the second focusing more on the distance and the quality of the frames, as well as the turntable for tracking. One thing we can do is actually increase the quality of that turntable by adding some more color information. So geometry is good, but geometry plus color is even better. So our third test will consist of one scan of the key with our good orientation and our increased texture on the turntable.
So with the increased texture of scan number three, hopefully we see an improvement in our final results. For our fourth and final scan, I'd like to introduce one last variable. I'm going to go back to the original turntable and show you how a scanning spray can solve all of your problems when it comes to scanning shiny or clear surfaces. The product is made by ASUB and it is in a spray can which allows you to apply it to any object and it disappears within a couple hours depending on which product you buy and it allows you to get a good scan of the object as if it was not a difficult to scan surface. So here I'm going to apply a little bit of the spray to the key. As you can see, once it dries, it has a nice matte finish. So let's see how the scanner picks up the surfaces with the scanning spray applied. Immediately, you can see how easy it is to scan this key, how much of the object the scanner is picking up. And this should give us the best results out of all of these tests. For the last three tests, I only scanned the difficult to scan portion of the key, but of course you can always complete the scan of the rest of the key to get nice looking models. Now let's process these scans and compare our results. The first set of scans was done with this putty, so we can combine the two scans by removing the base and the putty and then do the same to the next scan. Um, before I do that, I want to run global registration. I'll also do the same for the second scan. After global registration has been completed, I can then go to my editor tab and erase the parts that I don't need. Starting with the first scan, I'd like to look at the point cloud view. And that using the lasso selection tool, I will select just what I need, inverse the selection, and hit erase. Now these two scans are ready for alignment. Let's go to the Align tab. Again, a different rendering mode may help.
hit the align. Now that both scans are aligned, we can run another global registration and an outlier removal before doing a fusion. So as we can see, the results here are okay. I'm going to process the rest of my scans and we can take a look at all of the results side by side. The rest of the scans will just get a global registration and a fusion since there is no alignment necessary. So now that I've organized my scans and I've got four fusions, let's take a look at the first test. This was done in two scans in the traditional method, and as you can see, it did not capture the thickness of the key very well. The second scan, where it was oriented upright, is much better in that regard, and we could still see a little bit of a noise here. So for our third scan, where we increased the texture, in our reference material, in our turntable, you can see that this is a little bit better. And most importantly to note is that our errors are much lower going from our first test to our second to our third and fourth. And finally, we have our scanning spray that made this surface much better and easier to scan and as expected these are the best results. So as you can see, the 3D scanning spray has given us the best results. Sometimes people blame the scanner for bad results, but 3D scanning takes experience and skill. I hope these tips have been helpful and thank you for watching.